Do you let people toy with you? Do you ever feel puzzled about why you agreed to something you didn't want? Do some talks leave you feeling unsure about your own thoughts? Maybe you're being tricked without knowing it. We talk to lots of people, each with their own plans. Often these talks are harmless, but sometimes people might have bad plans and try to trick you. We're going to talk about the complicated world of manipulation today. This video is not just a chat. It's a big reveal about the 14 most hidden and strong forms of manipulation and how to protect yourself. Why is this important? Because manipulation isn't just from people around us, but also from big things like the media and social networks. Knowing these tricks isn't just about protecting yourself, it's about being more free and independent. I'll guide you through these tactics, showing you how to spot and stop these tricks. From gaslighting that makes you doubt yourself to emotional manipulation that messes with your feelings. We'll learn these tactics together, giving you the tools to stay strong and make choices that match your desires. Join me in this journey of learning and empowerment. If you're new here, please like the video and subscribe. If this video helps you, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. First form, manipulating emotions. Emotional manipulation is like playing a secret game where your feelings are game pieces and your mind is the board. Imagine you're walking in a magical forest where each tree stands for a different feeling like joy, fear or guilt. Someone can shake these trees to make you feel uneasy. It's important to understand that emotional manipulation isn't always clear. Sometimes it looks like someone caring for you, loving you, or being silent in a way that makes you feel something. Someone who uses emotional manipulation is like a puppet master, pulling your strings with your feelings. They might make you feel happy, sad or guilty to get you to do what they want, it's sneaky because they might seem friendly, but they're really in control. A common trick is using guilt. Imagine a friend asks you to do something you don't want to do. When you say no, they sigh and give you a sad look, saying, I used to think you were my friend. This makes you feel bad and start to question your choice, feeling selfish for taking care of yourself. Fear is another quiet way people can mess with your feelings. Someone might suggest that something bad could happen if you don't do what they want, without saying it out loud. It's like being in a dark room with only the person tricking you holding the light, making you rely on them. How can you protect yourself from this? Start by knowing your own feelings. Spend time figuring out what makes you happy, sad, angry or scared. Just like a gardener knows every plant in their garden, you should know every feeling you have. This will help you notice when someone is trying to play with your feelings. Setting clear boundaries is the second step. This doesn't mean building a wall around yourself, but having doors you can open or close when needed. Learn to say no without feeling bad and understand that you can't make everyone happy all the time. The third step is to look for balance in your relationships. A healthy relationship is like a dance where both people move together and respect each other. If you feel like you're always dancing to someone else's tune, it's time to rethink that relationship. Always value the strength of clear communication. Facing someone who tries to manipulate your feelings isn't easy, but phrases like, I feel this, or I'm not okay with this, can change the dynamic. Emotional manipulation is complex, but by being aware, setting boundaries, keeping balance and communicating clearly, you can protect your emotions. In the game of life, you are the ruler of your destiny. Second form, watch out for logical mistakes. Stay aware of arguments that appear sensible but are built on errors like personal attacks or broad statements. 
In debating, logical fallacies are like illusions in a desert. They appear to offer shelter and truth. But when you get close, they disappear, leaving only confusion and deceit. A logical fallacy happens when an argument seems reasonable but lacks a strong base. Spotting these mistakes is important for navigating daily conversations and guarding against subtle manipulation. One common fallacy is the personal attack, called ad hominem in Latin. This happens when someone targets a person's character instead of their argument. For instance, if you're debating politics and your opponent criticizes your education or past instead of your points, it's like someone playing dirty in a game by throwing sand in your eyes to distract you. Another common mistake is the hasty generalization. This is when a small sample or personal experience is used to judge an entire group. It's like seeing one bird fly south and assuming all birds fly south. This fallacy thrives on stereotypes and can cause discrimination and misunderstandings. Another one is the slippery slope fallacy. It claims that taking a small initial step will surely lead to a series of bad outcomes. For example, letting your child stay up late one night will supposedly make them a lifelong insomniac. This fallacy plays on the fear of what might happen next, often overstating potential effects. To avoid these fallacies, start by learning about them. Understanding their types and how they show up in conversations is like having a guide in a confusing maze. When you encounter an argument, consider if it truly focuses on the main issue and if it is supported by strong evidence or just guesses. Moreover, it's important to develop critical thinking skills. Don't just blindly accept everything you hear. Always question, analyze and look for proof behind any claims. Think like a detective searching for the truth, and don't be easily tricked by appearances. Lastly, learn to identify and avoid these logical mistakes in your own arguments. Stick to facts and logic in your discussions, and you'll help create more honest and effective conversations. In summary, being aware of logical fallacies is like having a guide in a sea of confusing and often misleading arguments. It helps you stay on the path of reason and truth, shielding you from being swayed by arguments that seem impressive, but are actually weak. Third form, spotting gaslighting. Be aware when someone tries to make you doubt what you actually see or feel. Gaslighting is a sneaky way of messing with your mind, making you doubt your memories or perception. It's similar to a mental game in which the manipulator tries to make the victim question their sanity, memory or perspective. Imagine someone secretly rearranging your room and then acting like everything is the same, causing you to question yourself. Know that this manipulation can show up in many ways. One common way is when the person denies what happened or says your experiences are not true. It's like you tell someone you saw a comet, and they say you must have imagined it, even though you know what you saw. Another way is by twisting the facts, making you unsure of your memories. If you remember agreeing on something, they might claim it never happened, or say something entirely different was agreed upon. It's like being in a funhouse of mirrors where everything gets more confusing. Also, gaslighting can show up when someone belittles your feelings, making you think your concerns are unimportant or silly. It's like being told you're overreacting to something that genuinely hurts you. To spot and stop gaslighting, trust your gut and remember your experiences. If something feels wrong, it probably is. Write down events, talks and your emotions. This can be in a diary or on your phone. Keeping these records can help you confirm your feelings and recall the details clearly. Additionally, ask for help from trustworthy friends or family. Sometimes, 
talking to someone who isn't directly involved can provide a new perspective and confirm your experiences. Taking care of yourself and believing in yourself are very important. Build your self-confidence and remember your thoughts and feelings are valid. Meditation or therapy can help keep you emotionally stable. Gaslighting is a kind of emotional abuse that makes you doubt what is real. Understanding how it works and trusting your own perceptions are crucial steps to protect yourself. Always remember, your reality is true and deserves respect. Fourth form, recognizing peer pressure. Identify when the people around you try to sway your decisions or beliefs. Group pressure is a powerful force that can be both subtle and obvious, greatly influencing what we do and think. It's like being in rough waters, where the waves of popular opinion push us in directions we might not choose on our own. This social influence works because we all want to belong and be accepted by others. Sometimes it's as easy as wearing clothes that help you fit in, or as complicated as changing your thoughts or actions to align with the groups. It's like trying not to be the odd one out by following the crowd, even if it takes you away from your own path. To stay aware and resist group pressure, it's key to develop strong self-esteem and confidence. Knowing who you are and what matters to you is like having an anchor in stormy seas. It keeps you grounded when the waves try to carry you away. It can be as simple as dressing in a certain way to blend in with others, or as complicated as changing your beliefs or actions to match those of the group. It's like avoiding standing out by following everyone else, even if it means going in a direction that's not really yours. To stay true to yourself and resist group pressure, it's important to build strong self-esteem and self-confidence. Knowing who you are and what you stand for acts like an anchor in rough waters, keeping you stable even when the waves try to pull you away. Another way to handle this is to learn how to spot when you're being influenced. Sometimes group pressure is clear, like when someone openly pushes you to do something. Other times it's more subtle, like when everyone around you adopts a certain opinion or lifestyle and you feel a silent pressure to do the same. It's like being in a room where everyone speaks in a certain way and you feel the need to change your voice to fit in. Learning how to say no is very important. Setting and keeping boundaries matters a lot. You don't need to be mean or argue, but being firm and clear in what you decide helps you stay true to who you are. Think of yourself like a tree with strong roots. Even when strong winds blow, your roots keep you steady. Also, find a group of friends who respect who you are. Being around people who appreciate different thoughts and support your choices is like having a safe place where you can be yourself without fear of being judged. Lastly, make choices based on your own values and beliefs not just on what others think is right. Sometimes this means going in a different direction, but it's key to living a true and happy life. Knowing about group pressure and learning to handle it helps you stay true to yourself and make decisions that match your real values. Remember, it's okay to be different and make your own choices, even if it means not always going along with the crowd. Fifth form, detecting too much flattery. Notice when someone uses lots of compliments to win your trust and then control you. Excessive flattery, which seems harmless, can actually be a clever way to manipulate you. It's like a sweet bait hiding a sharp hook. When someone keeps praising you, it's easy to get swept up in the good feelings without realizing you're being set up for manipulation. This kind of manipulation plays on our desire to feel important and valued. It's like being shown a magical mirror that reflects only our best side, making us forget to look deeper. Remember, if the praise is over the top or unrealistic, there are probably hidden reasons behind it. To avoid falling for this, 
Build a healthy self-esteem and understand your true strengths and weaknesses. This helps you judge compliments accurately, like an inner guide showing you when praise is genuine and when it's exaggerated. Pay attention to when and how often you get compliments. If someone praises you a lot or when they need something, they might have hidden motives. It's like when someone gives you a treat every time they need a favor. Eventually, you start to wonder if they really like you or just want something. Keep a bit of healthy emotional distance. If the flattery feels over the top, thank them politely, but don't let it sway you too much. Think of it like carrying an umbrella on a sunny day. It might seem unnecessary, but it's there just in case it rains. Get feedback from people you trust. Sometimes others can help you see if the compliments are real or just a way to manipulate you. It's like having a second opinion that helps you see things you might not notice yourself. Finally, learn to distinguish between sincere compliments and flattery. Genuine praise is specific and appropriate to the situation, while excessive flattery is often vague and exaggerated. Too much flattery can be a subtle form of manipulation. By having confidence in yourself, carefully evaluating compliments and keeping some emotional distance, you can avoid being manipulated and keep your relationships genuine and respectful. Sixth form, identifying isolation techniques. Notice when someone is trying to separate you from your friends, family or workmates. Isolation is a cunning and powerful manipulation tactic. By isolating you from your support networks like friends, family and co-workers, the manipulator makes you more susceptible and reliant, enabling their control over you. Think of it as being on a deserted island with no one else. You rely totally on the person who isolated you. To spot this tactic, Pay attention to small or obvious changes in your relationships. The manipulator might start questioning your friendships, making you doubt their intentions or loyalty. It's like they focus on every tiny flaw in your relationships, making it seem much bigger. They might also demand more time alone with you or criticize and belittle those around you. It's like they're slowly building a wall around you, blocking your view and access to others. To counter this, it's important to keep your relationships and support networks strong, even if someone tries to pull you away. Regularly talking to friends and family acts as lifelines that keep you grounded and offer different views. Another approach is to set and maintain clear boundaries. If someone tries to dictate who you can see or how you spend your time, be firm and clear about your limits. It's like building your own safe space where you decide who can come in. Trusting your gut is important. If you feel uneasy about how someone is influencing your relationships, there's likely a good reason. Our instincts serve as a warning system to alert us to threats to our well-being. If you feel cut off from others, seek support. Talking to a counsellor, therapist or a trusted friend can provide useful perspectives and help you see things clearly. Being able to identify isolation tactics is crucial for maintaining your independence and emotional health. By keeping communication open and trusting your instincts, you can defend yourself from isolation and manipulation, ensuring your relationships are fair and based on mutual respect. Seventh form, beware of ultimatums. Notice when you're being pushed to decide quickly. Ultimatums in manipulation are like being at the edge of a cliff. You feel trapped with a scary but simple choice. Manipulators use ultimatums to make you act fast, restricting your options to what they want. Spotting this tactic means recognizing when choices are presented in an extreme way. Statements like, if you cared, you'd do this, or if you don't do this, our friendship is over, are red flags showing someone is trying to pressure and control you. 
Ultimatums can seem reasonable at first, but if you look closer, they often disrespect your needs and boundaries. It's like a wolf pretending to be a sheep. Initially, it seems harmless, but its true nature is much darker. When faced with ultimatums, take a moment to relax and don't rush into a decision. You generally have more time than it seems. Think of it like pausing a video game. It allows you to gather your thoughts and consider your options. Also, think about the possible outcomes of each choice. Ultimatums usually make one choice seem much worse, but by looking at the long-term effects, you might find a better way that matches your values and needs. It's like checking a map before picking a route. It helps you see all the possible paths and what they lead to. Another tip is to clearly talk about your feelings and limits. By saying how the ultimatum affects you and setting what you will and won't accept, you can assert your independence. It's like standing strong, showing you won't be easily pushed around. If you're always dealing with ultimatums in your relationship, it might be time to reconsider it. A good, respectful relationship shouldn't have threats or pressure to behave in a certain way. Recognizing ultimatums and managing them well is important for keeping your freedom to choose and making decisions that are best for you, not based on what someone else wants. Stay calm, weigh your options, and clearly communicate your boundaries. These steps are important for handling the challenges of ultimatums. You're now at the middle point of the video. I applaud your effort to improve yourself, and I kindly ask you to leave a comment as it really supports my channel. If you're unsure what to say, simply type I will not be fooled to let me know you made it this far. Also, remember to subscribe for more content like this. Eighth form, identifying blame. Blame happens when someone tries to make you feel guilty to control what you do or think. It's a sneaky but strong way to manipulate, like a slow poison that gets into your mind, making you doubt yourself and your choices. To spot blame, you need to notice when someone is shifting their responsibility or emotions onto you, making you feel constantly guilty. This can look like someone saying, you make me feel bad when you don't do what I want, or if you hadn't done that, I wouldn't have reacted this way. It's like looking into a twisted mirror that makes all your actions seem wrong. When dealing with blame, it's vital to stand by your own reality, recognizing that your feelings and thoughts matter. Don't let someone else change your story or make you feel guilty for things you can't control. Imagine it as using a shield to protect yourself from hurtful accusations. Reflecting on the situation before accepting blame helps. Ask yourself if you're really at fault and if the blame is fair, like checking a map before a trip to ensure you're on the right path. Communicating is key too. Share your feelings when wrongly blamed and set boundaries. For instance, say, I understand you're upset but I'm not responsible for your actions. It's like putting a no entry sign in your emotional space. Furthermore, being with people who are supportive and respectful is very important. A positive and healthy environment is like fertile soil where you can flourish, unlike rocky ground where nothing can grow. In short, spotting blame is key to keeping your emotional and mental health strong. By noticing and addressing this behavior, you can protect yourself from being controlled and make sure your actions and thoughts are truly yours, free from unfair guilt. Keep your mind clear, your boundaries strong, and your environment healthy to navigate blame safely. Ninth form, understanding when your information overloaded. Be cautious when you're flooded with complex or confusing information as it can hinder your ability to make clear decisions. Information overload is like a storm in your brain. Picture yourself in the center of a hurricane of data, facts and figures spinning around you. This can lead to confusion, 
making it hard to make good decisions. This tactic relies on overwhelming you with details so you can't see the big picture. Manipulators use this method to confuse you, making you more open to their control. It's like being given a puzzle with too many pieces, hoping you'll give up and let them lead. To protect yourself, first, recognize when you're getting too much information. If you feel overwhelmed, take a moment to breathe. It's like pausing a chaotic movie to understand the plot. Then, break down the information into smaller, simpler parts, like dismantling a complicated engine to understand it better. A great way to clear up confusion is by asking questions. Clearing up doubts can remove the confusion. Saying, I don't understand, can you explain it differently, can help you see things more clearly. It's like turning on a light in a dark room. Also, seek external opinions or advice. Consulting with an unbiased third party can give you a fresh and clear viewpoint. It's like looking at a map from above, offering a clear view of the landscape. Trust your gut feelings too. If something feels confusing or too much, it might mean you're being manipulated. Think of it as your inner alarm, warning you of danger. Knowing when you're overloaded with information helps you keep your independence and make your own choices. By noticing, breaking down, inquiring and seeking help, you can stay peaceful amidst the flood of info and make choices that are truly yours. Remember, in a place where knowledge is strength, safeguarding your mind is like protecting your strongest fortress. Tenth form, knowing when topic shifts. Observe when someone keeps changing the subject to dodge blame or mislead you. Topic shifting is like a magic act in conversations. One minute you're talking about something important and the next the subject is completely different, leaving you confused. This move diverts attention from delicate or awkward topics and is a sneaky but effective way to manipulate. It's like walking on a straight path and suddenly finding yourself lost in a maze of dead-end talks. Manipulators are skilled at this misdirection. When confronted or questioned, they quickly shift topics to escape responsibility or inspection. It's like a dancer skillfully stepping to avoid danger. To stay focused during these twists, the first step is to recognize when it's happening. If the topic changes abruptly, without a clear reason, it's a warning sign. It's like noticing the scenery suddenly shifting on a trip. When you notice the topic changing, try to bring the conversation back to the main issue. You could say, that's interesting, but let's get back to our main discussion. This is like a captain guiding the ship back on its path after a side trip. Stay calm and firm, and don't get lost in unrelated topics. It's like keeping your balance in strong winds. If the topic keeps changing, ask directly, why are we changing the subject? This is like turning on a light in a dark room, showing what's hidden. Finally, set clear communication boundaries. If the conversation isn't productive or keeps getting off track, it's okay to end it. It's like leaving a game that isn't fair. Recognizing these topic shifts is key to honest and clear communication. By noticing, redirecting and questioning these changes, you ensure a meaningful and respectful conversation. In discussions, staying focused is as important as knowing how to steer. Let's delve deeper into recognizing manipulation by shedding light on a few more subtle tactics that can often go unnoticed. These tactics might not always be as overt as emotional manipulation or ultimatums, but they can still significantly impact our decisions and perceptions. Eleventh form, playing the victim. Be wary when someone constantly portrays themselves as the victim to garner sympathy and manipulate your emotions. Playing the victim is like wearing a disguise, hiding the true intentions behind a facade of innocence and helplessness. 
Manipulators often use this tactic to guilt trip you into complying with their wishes or to deflect accountability for their actions. They paint themselves as the underdog, unfairly treated by circumstances or others, to evoke pity and sympathy. It's as if they're laying down a trap, appealing to your compassionate nature to gain an upper hand in the situation. To counter this manipulation, it's essential to maintain a clear perspective and not let sympathy cloud your judgment. While it's important to empathize with others, it's equally crucial to assess the situation objectively and recognize when someone is exploiting your emotions. Pay attention to patterns of behavior where someone repeatedly casts themselves as the victim, especially when it conveniently serves their agenda or excuses their behavior. When faced with someone playing the victim, it's important to establish boundaries and hold them accountable for their actions. Encourage open and honest communication where each party takes responsibility for their role in the situation. By fostering accountability and transparency, you create a healthier dynamic where manipulation tactics are less likely to thrive. Twelfth form, love bombing. Be cautious of excessive displays of affection or attention used to overwhelm and manipulate you. Love bombing is like being showered with gifts and compliments in a whirlwind romance where everything seems too good to be true. Manipulators employ this tactic to quickly establish a deep emotional connection and gain control over your emotions and decisions. They lavish you with attention, affection, and flattery, making you feel special and valued. However, behind this facade of love and admiration lies a hidden agenda to manipulate and exploit your vulnerabilities. To protect yourself from love bombing, it's essential to maintain a healthy skepticism and not let your emotions override your judgment. While it's natural to enjoy affection and compliments, be cautious of someone who showers you with excessive attention too quickly. Take the time to get to know the person and assess their intentions before fully investing yourself in the relationship. Set boundaries early on and communicate your needs and expectations clearly. If someone's affection feels overwhelming or insincere, don't hesitate to express your concerns and take a step back. Trust your instincts and prioritize your emotional well-being above fleeting displays of affection. Thirteenth form, manipulation through silence. Be wary when someone uses silence as a weapon to control and manipulate you. Manipulation through silence is like a void that swallows your voice, leaving you feeling unheard and powerless. Manipulators employ this tactic to exert control over conversations and situations, using silence as a means of intimidation or punishment. They may give you the silent treatment or withhold communication as a way to manipulate your behavior or extract concessions. To counter manipulation through silence, it's important to refuse to be silenced or intimidated. Don't succumb to the pressure of the silent treatment. Instead, Assert your right to communication and express your concerns openly. Encourage dialogue and strive to resolve conflicts through constructive communication rather than passive-aggressive tactics. Fourteenth form, manipulation through projection. Be cautious when someone attributes their own negative traits or behaviors to you as a way to deflect blame and manipulate your perception of reality. Manipulation through projection is like a twisted mirror that reflects someone else's flaws onto you, distorting your self-image and fostering self-doubt. Manipulators use this tactic to avoid accountability for their actions and shift the focus onto you, making you feel guilty or responsible for their shortcomings. To combat manipulation through projection, it's important to maintain a clear sense of self and recognize when someone is projecting their insecurities onto you. Don't internalize their accusations 
or let them undermine your self-confidence. Instead, assert your boundaries and hold the manipulator accountable for their behavior. Refuse to accept blame for actions that aren't yours and prioritize your emotional well-being above appeasing the manipulator. This journey through the 14 ways to identify and handle manipulation has shown us various techniques used by people trying to unfairly control our thoughts, feelings and decisions. Techniques like emotional manipulation and topic diversion show how these individuals operate and how we can protect our independence and integrity. Awareness is our strongest tool. By understanding these tactics, we can better identify and resist manipulation in our daily lives. It's like having a map in difficult terrain, guiding us to safety. Manipulation can come in various forms and affect different parts of our lives, like personal relationships, the workplace, or the public. However, with the right knowledge and skills, we can resist these challenges and keep our minds and emotions safe from unwanted influence. If you found this message helpful, please like and comment to help others find it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. Check out our past videos too. You're sure to find something useful. Have a wonderful day. I'd love to know which of the 14 ways to spot manipulation stood out to you. Have you encountered any of these tactics in your life? How did you handle them and what strategies worked best for you? Please share your experiences and reflections in the comments. Your insights are valuable not only to me, but also to others who might be seeking guidance and support. Together, we can build a community of learning and support where we share knowledge and experiences to effectively deal with manipulation. Looking forward to hearing from you, fellow Stoic. Until next time.